Hey again, and welcome back. Uh, today we've got five packages lined up. It's time for another mailbag. First one up is this one here uh, that says dual circuit holder, uh, and there's three of them in here. Um, I had to open this before though because it was so long. So June 19th to August 18, 24, 95, and the numbers on here didn't actually correspond to anything, but the seller did send me something which was good so definitely three items hopefully the three I've ordered that says a 50 amp on it that says 60 amp on it And that says 150 amps on it. So what these are is they are circuit breakers, but in the shape of an automotive uh, fuse set for a like a, a, a stereo amplifier. So these, oh yeah, okay, so they won't come out. Uh, typically on a stereo amplifier, these come out. And yeah, okay, so they have an Allen key up here. And basically, if uh, it goes over current, you know, 50 amps, 60 amps, and 150 amps, um, then it's going to open, protect the circuit, and then you reset it by pressing it down. So you don't have to replace the fuse all the time. Now, the reason I bought a bunch of these, well, first of all, I was more interested in having them all of the same current, uh, but I couldn't do that because if I put two of the same one in my cart, the shipping went up. So I kind of cheated the system a bit by getting, you know, 50 and 60 amps is kind of the same thing. Um, and 150 amps is, is uh, you know, completely different. So this 150 amp one, I want between two batteries and the 60 and 50 amp one will be on either side of my uh, solar panel system. And these are supposed to be waterproof, but you know, I'm not sure about that. So I'm going to have to test these at some point, but to test them, I'm going to have to put, you know, decent size load on them. And that means uh, bringing in my 12 volt battery uh, and trying to pull as much current as I can out of them, probably by short circuiting uh, something. So that should be interesting. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know. But let's just uh, confirm that they do work to open the circuit. Got the Fluke 179 here, and I'm gonna set it to continuity buzzer. So when I stuff this in here, and I stuff the other end in the other end, yeah, continuity, yeah, and then when you press the button, no more continuity. So that does work. That does work. Oh. oh, there we go, I wasn't pressed in. There we go, that works. Uh, so now, I'm not gonna bring those massive batteries over, so you're just gonna have to wait for their own videos, but I do wanna test these things to make sure they work before I have to, you know, sort of rely on them. The only other thing is that this grommet is pretty big. It's for a fairly hefty size cable, so we'll have to figure out what to do about that. Well, I just screwed up the filming of the second item. $15.39, August 5th ordered, August 20th arrived. Um, it is these. These are two GT belts, or GT2 belts. I think GT2 and 2GT are the same, except the tooth profile is slightly different. Um, and so I think the 2GT can handle a little bit more torque. So I got a 500 mil closed belt, a... 600 mil closed belt and a 710 mil closed belt and this is just for prototyping reasons um, because I had before uh, 300 250 and and 200 mil so this is a 300 and I felt this was a bit too small but I find it funny because now I find that 500 is too big so 500 is too big 300 is too small I should have probably just ordered a 400 but whatever 
Um, so we'll see if I can make this work. Uh, maybe if I have like a big pulley in here, a small pulley here, and then tensioners kind of squeezing down this way, maybe the 500 will be fine. But yeah, the goal here is because I want to uh, increase the torque of an electric motor. So I'll have a big pulley on whatever I want to turn and a small pulley on the electric motor. And then it should multiply the torque enough so I get some nice heavy torque. Or I could even do with this longer one, maybe I can do two motors, one here, one here, then a big pulley in the middle, two tensioners pushing down in the middle like that. Who knows? We'll see. I haven't designed the parts yet, so that's why I have these belts because I like to um, design iteratively, iteratively and I like to design uh, with the parts in my hand, take my own measurements. I don't like relying on, you know, ordering stuff online. I can also, what I can do is if these belts happen to be slightly too short or slightly too long, I can just, you know, set it up in my system and then just measure it with uh, you know some slack taken off and then maybe then it can figure out the right length so yeah I like to have things on hand when I design that's why I ordered these next one up is this one here uh, $8.48 August 25th ordered September 12th arrived um, I, I know what this is and I'm not sure if there's actually the amount I ordered in here okay maybe there is all right, so these are rivet nuts. Um, so basically, if you know how a rivet works, it's kind of like a piece of, like a metal sleeve with a metal um, stick through it, shaft through it. What happens if you put the metal sleeve through a hole and then you pull the shaft out and it expands the sleeve to fill the hole. So it's kind of like a, a fastener. These here are a little bit different though because they do the same thing. The uh, outside of them the outside of them does expand. You pull the middle through and the outside expands. However, uh, they have threads inside. And so when you uh, expand it into something, so if I use this this one here, these light, little bit bigger ones, so you put them through a hole and then you pull, you pull it through to expand it, then you can still thread a screw in there. So I have a, quite a few sizes of these, but these are M4, so metric 4 millimeter, and M3, metric 3 millimeter uh, threads. So you can actually put these into 3D prints, into wood, cardboard, uh, sheet metal, mostly sheet metal that it's made for, and you pull it through and then you can use um, threads. So um, I guess I can show you an example of how it works. So just a quick demo to install the riv nuts. Um, you can either get a tool like this that looks like a regular riveter uh, but has a slightly different attachment. I do not have the attachment for this one uh, because I have this one, which is the other style, which is the style I recommend everyone gets. The one with two arms that you can put a lot of force into it. So basically, you have these adapters here and let's see if we want the M4 one, whoops, comes with two pieces, it comes with the M4 thread up here and like a mandrel that will um, force against and what you do is you have to, I think you remove this, it's been a little while since I've used this tool, yeah then you push this down and you thread in the uh, threaded part. like so and that collar goes up like that and then uh, this here threads into the base of the tool and then the mandrel onto the top like so and then to use this all you have to do is well just look at the threads there and when you squeeze the threads get pulled in so the goal is you take one of these uh, threaded inserts, thread it onto like that. So now when you push this, when you push these arms together, it'll squish this. So basically you grab the object that you're trying to put threads into and then 
I'm just going to squeeze it up against me here because usually this is held in like a vise or something. And you just squeeze. Oops, might have pulled the threads out. <laughs> I did. I pulled, I pulled a little bit too hard. But if you can see here, This is what happened. It basically uh, squished itself, and so now this is installed in there solid. And uh, since these are aluminum, they'll conduct electricity quite well, so you could use them as little studs like that. I didn't think that was my goal to use them like that as well. Uh, and then you would just put, you know, a ring terminal there and an M4 screw. So yeah, these things are very useful, and now I have them in M4 and M3. Uh, just try not to pull the threads out of it like I did there. The penultimate package is this one here. Uh, no details on this. This came from Amazon very clearly. Um, but it was $20, $19.99. And it took two days to arrive because it is prime. Oh, wow. Um, so this thing is not supposed to stay in one piece for long. Because uh, this is actually a sacrificial exploratory part. I'm going to be taking this apart, probably on a video, to see how it's made on the inside. This here is a knockoff Xbox 360 controller. Ooh. It doesn't feel great. It's functional, doesn't feel great. Ooh, that feels very bad. Now, I don't have the actual original Xbox 360 controller to compare this with, so I'm not 100% sure if this is an accurate representation. Oh, but it does not feel good. Um, but the goal is to, to check out how it's made on the inside because I want to make my own controller uh, I've actually found a lot of the software that I need to do so. Um, and I just want to be able to buy sort of like the membranes on the inside. I want to copy the traces uh, in KiCad and stuff like that. So this, it does, I mean, it, it doesn't feel great. I'm actually not even sure if I'm going to tear this down now. I might want to just send it back and maybe buy an original one. It's all full of scuffs and stuff. Hmm. A little disappointed. I mean, I knew it was going to be kind of uh, low quality, but to this extent, I didn't know. Hmm. Hmm. And the last package is this one here, $25.41, um, August 8th ordered, August 19th arrived. Hopefully I didn't make a hole through any of these. Nope. I don't really know what this is for. You know what these things are? There should be 20 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So these are vacuum bags and they are sized appropriately uh, to be for, for a filament, for 3D printing filament. So I have a bunch of filament now because I have a bunch of 3D printing projects on the go. And when filament is on sale, I pick some up. And so uh, when I don't use it, I just need an, a way to uh, help keep the moisture away. And so I figured I would just make uh, I would just make use of these things. I put the desiccant in the middle 
and pull a vacuum on them. So, I mean, let's see if it works. Here's a random roll of filament I have just kicking around. Um, this stuff is actually terrible stuff. I don't think it's branded at all. I wasn't a fan of it. Um, so I use it for prototyping. I basically, uh, on parts that I need to iterate on, I print them in this stuff just to see if the geometry lines up. Okay, and I think this closes, but I think they give you this to use to help snap everything shut. There we go. Should be shut now. And apparently you just put this little... Oh yeah, it does pull a good vacuum. So you put this little thing here and then... Hmm. I don't know how this air valve is supposed to work. This is an air valve. You're supposed to push air out. Is there a sticker on top? I don't understand how this works. Oh, that's working. Sucking all the air out. Oh, wow, this is a lot of work, though. So I guess the theory of this is that the air that's inside has some moisture. So the, the less air you have inside, the less moisture is inside with it. And then the desiccant bags don't have to work as hard. Seems to draw quite a decent vacuum. It'd be nice to lock a uh, pressure gauge in there. There we go. So it's vacuumed down. There's a lot less air in there than there was before. It's not completely tight, tight, tight. There has to be a bit of space, right? But I'd say that's perfectly serviceable. Yeah, there we go. So. I think this will be good for storing uh, filament for longer term and with a um, desiccant bag in the middle, that should be just fine. I don't know how long it's going to hang on to the vacuum, but I suppose there's only one way to find out. Neat. And so that's it. Um, that's it for the mailbag today. Thank you so much to my Patreon patrons whose funds allow me to buy these things with. Uh, I hope you saw something you found interesting. Uh, if you have, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.